All right, uh, thank you. Uh, so my name is Sebastian. I work for Core Geosystems. Um, we were founded in 2016. We launched our flagship product in 2018. It's kind of like a co-pilot for core logging geologists, so trying to automate repetitive tasks and provide decision support. Um, and uh, we were in the second round of MICA funding, uh, so it's been about a year, so we have some updates in terms of what we've been up to. Um, so the three main value propositions of our platform are productivity. There's a lot of things that core logging geologists do that can be uh, very time consuming and can be automated with available technology. Um, so counting fractures, marking up core, uh, finding run block errors and so on. Um, consistency, so we target uh, large volume production mining um, and in those situations, like we have one project in Australia where they're drilling 400,000 meters a year, so the logging team required to process that amount of core on a daily basis is quite large and these large teams will um, produce inconsistent logs that have to get uh, corrected at some point in the resource modeling process, uh, which can be very time consuming. And then with respect to the flexibility of work, um, our product uh, definitely uh, became a lot more uh, appealing to companies during COVID uh, because it allowed for certain aspects of core logging to be done uh, remotely. Um, so here you can see this visual core logging platform. And so the idea is that um, you're logging directly on top of your high quality um, core photography. And so uh, companies have been either, um, you know, in Australia where it's very hot, you know, people working inside in air conditioned areas, logging their core or actually doing it uh, offsite. And also, um, so I teach over the University of Toronto and we have a, an undergraduate mining engineering program and uh, the rate of graduates from this program is in decline, uh, same across the geosciences generally. And so um, this uh, platform is, you know, part of a solution. I think, you know, attracting young people into industry still needs to be done, of course, but uh, the flexibility of work uh, as a result of a platform like this um, can potentially help um, attract people um, given uh, increased flexibility. Um, so we have a suite of uh, AI models in the cloud that do various things. They find fractures, they find veins, they log lithologies, and uh, this is a kind of a, a high-level overview of the process. So you're in the core shed, you take a high-quality photo with our system or your own uh, photography station. This goes up to the cloud, uh, gets marked up by an AI, uh, and then you get a quick log for geotech and, and geology uh, with an AI. You bring those quick logs down onto the web app, and then you can modify them um, and eventually push them to your database. Um, so this is our, our platform. Basically, it's uh, data agnostic, so we're pulling in different data types from any platform. We have our own hardware as well. Um, the core is this visual core logging platform, which is a web app, and then we have the suite of AI models uh, in the cloud. And so the MICA project was basically uh, about these two pieces. One is to basically make those machine learning models continuously learning. Um, so they're kind of choosing the data from which they learn. Um, and then allowing geologists to actually build and deploy their own models. So kind of removing the need for big data science teams in our company and actually putting the power of uh, machine learning uh, into the hands of the people who understand uh, the use case the best. And so, you know, I think the problem that we ran into is that, you know, uh, building one model, you know, you're going to have several models per site, you're going to have many different sites. Um, and so the size of the team required to support and maintain those models uh, was just becoming too large. And so what we um, decided to do as part of this project was to build a platform where basically you cut out the middleman, uh, which would be the data scientists at our company, um, and basically build a platform that allows geologists to build and train and maintain their own models. And we can do this because the technology we're using, which is deep learning for computer vision, is, uh, is a quite a mature technology. You can see it there entering the fifth stage of the hype cycle. Um, and so this is allowing us, we, we know all the best practices, we can, we can build this into the platform. Um, and so uh, I'll just say that this uh, all relies on this one key piece, which is the AI uh, markup. And uh, what you can see here is that any uh, image of drill core that comes into our system gets automatically marked up. So you can see these digital meter marks and that requires, uh, the, uh, that um, reduces the need to kind of manually uh, mark up core, finds all the run block errors and all this kind of stuff. So uh, what we've built is uh, geologists can train their own models. A geologist can go into AI Studio. They can say, I want to build a model that logs lithology uh, using dry photos. They can select uh, the boreholes and they can train their model. 
Um, and now they can go over to runs and they can see that there's a model, it's being trained in the cloud, and it'll be done in two and a half hours. When it's done, uh, you get a very detailed report. Uh, where did the model do well? Where did it do badly? You get a, uh, a health check on the quality of your labels. Um, you get strip logs um, and you get to decide if you want to deploy this model, if you think it's adding value, or you need to refine it by um, fixing some of those errors. Uh, if you have a model that you think is going to add value in your production workflow, um, you can now uh, select that model and you can deploy it. And this means that anybody in your organization logging core um, can have access to that model. So now we've just selected this new model and deployed it. And now you can use it. So anybody can, for example, take this new model and they can select any number of boreholes that they want to generate these predictions for. And now um, they can use those quick logs as the starting point for their uh, core logging. You can see somebody going over to the strip log here. You've got Joyce, which is what we call our AI. And then you've got some ground truths that were brought in from Jim Suite to just show you um, a comparison. So that's your starting point when you're logging uh, core now. Um, another really cool feature that you get out of this is that um, every image now has a digital fingerprint. And uh, so let's say this is all of our data that we've already logged on the left-hand side. We've got four rock types. And we've got this new row of core that comes in and we're curious about what it could be. Um, what we can essentially do is find the nearest neighbors of that core using uh, basically these digital fingerprints. So similar core will, that looks visually similar will cluster. Um, and so you can see here that it might say, okay, these three photos on the left look the most like the one you're curious about and you have previously logged those as rock type B. So this is what it would look like in the platform. Any row of rock, you can right click on it, say find similar images and you can search. And so these five rows of core that have already been logged are the most visually similar to the one you're curious about and they've all been logged by your geologist as uh, this yellow type of rock. So what's next for us? Uh, this year we've integrated uh, geochemistry and geophysics uh, into the platform. That means that you can build models that don't only use uh, photography but also use uh, other types of geoscience data. And by 2025 we're hoping to bring in other image types. So that would be derivatives of hyperspectral uh, photography as well as UV uh, photography. And that's everything, thank you.